Chapter 14 of Iracema, the Honey Lips, a Legend of Brazil, by José de Alencar. Translated by Isabel Burton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 14. The Tabajara Braves, excited by their copious libations of foaming kaolin, were inflamed by the voice of Irapuã, who had so often led them to victory. Wine appeases the thirst of the body, but breeds another and a wilder thirst in the savage mind. The braves yell vengeance against the audacious stranger who had defied their arms, and who had offended the god of their fathers and their war chief, the greatest of the Tabajaras. Then they leapt with rage and rushed about in the darkness. The red light of the Ubirata, which shone in the distance, guided them to the cabin of Araquen. From time to time, the foremost of those who came to spy the enemy raised themselves up from the ground. The Pajé is in the forest, they murmured. And the stranger, inquired Irapuã. In the cabin, with Iracema. The great chief leaps up with a terrific bound and reaches the wigwam door followed by his warriors. The face of Kaubi appears at the entrance. His arms guarded a space in front of him say, within the reach of a Maracajá spring. Dastardly are the braves who attack in herds like the Kaitetus, the jaguar, lord of the forest, and the Anaji, lord of the clouds. Combat the enemy alone. Dirt be in the vile mouth which raises its voice against the bravest of the Tabajara braves. Saying these words, Irapuã brandished his fatal tomahawk. But his arms stopped in the air. The bowels of the earth again rumbled, as they had rumbled when Araquen awoke the awful voice of Tupin. The braves raise a cry of fear, and surrounding their chief, force him away from the funest spot and the wrath of Tupin, so evidently roused against them. Calbi once more lay down across the threshold. His eyes sleep, but his ears keep watch. The voice of Tupin became silent. Iracema and the Christian, lost in the depths of the earth, descended into a deep grotto. Suddenly, a voice arising from the cavernous depths filled their ears. Does the sea warrior listen to the words of his brother? It is Pochi, the friend of thy guest, said the Christian to the maid. Iracema trembled. He speaks by the mouth of Tupin. Marching them answered the Pichiguara. The words of Pochi enter into the soul of his brother. Does no other ear listen? None save those of the virgin, who twice in one son has saved the life of thy brother. Woman is weak, the Tabajara is revengeful, and the brother of Jacauna is prudent. Iracema sighed and lay her head upon the youth's breast. Lord of Iracema, Stop her ears that she may not listen. Martin gently put away the graceful head. The Pichiguara chief may speak. The ears that listen are friendly and faithful. His brother orders and Pochi speaks. Ere the sun shall rise over the Serra, the sea warrior must seek the river plain of the heron's nests. The dead star will guide him to the white beach. No Tabajara brave will follow him because the Nubia of the Pichiguaras will sound from the mountainside. How many Pichiguara braves accompany their valiant chief? Not one. Pochi came alone with his arms. When the bad spirits of the forest separated the sea warrior from his brother, Pochi followed his trail. His heart would not let him return to call the braves of his taba, but he sent his faithful dog to the great Jacauna. The Pichiguara chief is alone. He must not sound the Inubia, which will raise all the Tabajara braves against him. He must do it, to save his white brother. Pochi will mock at Irapuã, as he mocked him when he fought with a hundred men against his white brother. The daughter of the Pajé, who had listened silently, now bent towards the Christian's ear. Irasema would save the stranger and his brother. She knows her thoughts. The Pichiguara chief is staunch and brave. Irapuã is crafty and treacherous as the Akawan. Before the stranger can reach the forest, 
he must fall, and his brother must also fall with him. What can the Tabajara maid do to save the stranger and his brother? asked Martin. One more sun, and another must rise. Then the moon of flowers will appear. It is the feast time, when the Tabajara braves pass the night in the sacred wood, and receive from the Pajé their happy dreams. When they are all sleeping, the white warrior will leave the plains of Ipu, and will vanish from the eyes of Iracema but not from her soul. Marching strained the maiden to his breast, but soon he gently repelled her. The contact of her beautiful form, sweet as the forest lily, warm as the nest of the beja flor, was as a thorn in his heart, for he remembered the awful warning of the pajé. The voice of the Christian repeated to Pochi the project of Iracema. The Pichiguara chief, prudent as the Tamanduá, took thought and then replied, Wisdom has spoken by the mouth of the Tabajara virgin. Pochi will wait the moon of flowers. End of chapter 14